Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Ooh. Come on in the room, people of God. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Come on in the room, people of God. Good morning. That is a word from the Lord on today. I appreciate y'all bearing with me this morning. I am traveling, so I'm running a few minutes late this morning. Hallelujah. All right, come on in the room, people of God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, God is so faithful. God is so faithful. Come on in the room. There is a word from the Lord on today. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, let me and you rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Ooh. All right, all right, all right. We will not uh, delay. Hallelujah. God is so amazing, y'all. He woke us up yet another day. Come on, we're going to get in the word today, y'all. There is a word from the Lord. It's my eight pen. Y'all just bear with me. I'm traveling, so we got to make do. We make do. Okay. Good morning, Ohio. Good to see you this morning. I think it's so amazing to be able to uh, just join in collectively from wherever we're joining in. Amen, amen. It's a beautiful thing to wake up and get in your word in the morning. Set your affections on the Lord. Let me grab my e pen because sometimes I need that. Hallelujah. Yes, it's definitely a great day to have a good day on purpose. Hallelujah. Yes, it is so amazing. God is faithful. All things work together for the good. Of those that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. Come on in the room if you are watching on TikTok. I encourage you to double tap the screen. We can invite some more people. Make sure you share the broadcast this morning. Come on. There is a word from the Lord on today, y'all. Hallelujah. No matter what. No matter what. Good morning, Kansas. Good, uh, no matter what comes. No matter what goes. God, I bless your name. The blood is still the blood. That's what I want you to know this morning. No matter how the situation looks, you know, I always say if the blood can't do it, it just won't get done. The blood is still the blood. Come on. My God. You know what? Sunday school, somebody said, let me, let me make sure I got that comment right. He was a Sunday school teacher for years. No, listen, how blessed a Sunday school teacher is so amazing. I remember my Sunday school teacher when I was um, probably kindergarten, first grade. Her name was Miss Thomas. And I remember that um, I remember that uh, she was just such an amazing part of my life growing up. I, I couldn't wait to get to Sunday school. Uh, it was always the lesson was always so memorable. And it walked with me all the days of my life. And she lived, I don't know if she's still alive, but the last time I visited my home church, she was, um, she was, I think, 98, still walking around, still doing good. Listen, the Lord preserves those who preserve others, okay? He keeps his hand on those that keep his hand, their hands on others, all right? So listen, that is so beautiful. Listen, I'm so glad that you're coming back into the fold. Um, God is so good. God is so good. It happens. It happens. We all have our faith tried. We all have our faith tested. Um, but I'm glad that you are coming on back in the room. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
God is so good, y'all. Come on. All right, let's hop into uh let's hop into it this morning. The blood is still the blood. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This song is called The Blood by Maverick City. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh holy God, that you are. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Yee, glory. The blood is still the blood. That's the part right there. Now, if the blood stop being the blood, now we got something to worry about. But as long as the blood still works. Yee. My God. That's the part that just... As long as the blood still heals. Come on. As long as the blood still breaks. Come on. As long as the blood still keeps. As long as the blood still sanctifies. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. God is so faithful. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh holy God. Mm, mm, mm. My, 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 my. Hallelujah, glory. Thank you for the blood this morning, Lord. I just want to encourage you to know it still works. It's still flowing. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. It washes. As long as the blood is still washing, God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Woo. Listen, I'm trying to hold tight because my family is resting. <laughs> but the blood. The blood. Oh, yes, God. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It washes white as than snow. I just want you to know that for blood. It don't matter what you come from. It don't matter what you came out of. My God, it don't matter what you did yesterday. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah, the blood. The blood is still the blood. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory. He's a good God. He's a good God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. When I tell y'all God is so amazing, he is so wonderful. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Lord, we thank you for the blood on today, God. We thank you for the cleansing blood. We thank you for the sanctifying blood. God, I bless your name. We thank you for your holy blood. We thank you for your healing blood. We thank you for your delivering blood on this morning. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hey. Yee. Glory. Listen. My God, we thank you for the blood that paid the price. My God, hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to know, oh God. Help us to remember, oh God, when life gets hard, that the blood has already paid the price. My God, and the same blood, he, glory, the same blood, God, I bless your name, that flow back then is still flowing. My God, it reaches the lowest valley. My God, and it reaches the highest mountain. God, I bless your name. We thank you for the blood this morning, God. We thank you for the blood this morning. We thank you for the blood this morning. Hey, God, I bless your name. We thank you for the washing. We thank you for the purging. We thank you for the cleaning. My God, hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We bless your name in this place. We are your children and we are here and we are listening. God, I bless your name. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We call you holy. We call you righteous. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We decree and declare that it's still washing us. Come on. It's all right. It's still washing you. See, somebody's trying to fall into condemnation because you didn't do everything God said do yesterday. You didn't say everything you told you to say. My God. Come on. Somebody fell into sin and they backslid last night. My God. I'm not giving you an excuse. Come on. Don't, don't get it twisted. My God. But I'm trying to let you know that the blood is still cleansing you. My God. It's still washing you. Hey, God, I bless your name. Come on. It's still washing you. Woo, glory, you're still cleansing. My God, I love the Lord. He's good to us. Hallelujah. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Stephanie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh, holy God. Still cleansing me. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name, oh holy God. Ooh, glory. Should have been me. Come on. My God. Hallelujah. Should have been me. God, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Ooh, somebody sent me a song. Inbox it to me. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh holy God, that you are. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. It took my place. It should have been me. Come on. Yee. We thank him for the blood on today. We thank him. Hey, God, I bless your name. Come on. My God, I remember when I was being delivered and I began to complain a little bit. Good morning, Erica. I began to complain a little bit. God, I bless your name. And, and the Lord, he told me this. I heard the Holy Spirit say, uh, you didn't have to go up on no cross. You didn't have to hang all day. You didn't have to get beat. You didn't have to hang in the hot sun. Come on, you didn't have to get pierced. You didn't have to get whipped to be delivered. It ain't even hard. It helped me. That, that helped me. I said, you know what? You know what? Let me quit complaining. We always are complaining about how hard something is. But the hard part's already done. God, I bless your name. My God. Hallelujah. I love God. He's good to us. Yay. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Somebody said, not another sister brainwashing us into Jesus. Yes. You got to be brainwashed. Maybe your brain has got to be washed by the blood. Come on. He said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, that is exactly what we are doing. We are washing our mind <laughs> by way of the blood this morning. Hallelujah. Yay. Glory. I love God. He's good to us, y'all. The blood is still the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That is a word from the Lord on today, y'all. Let's hop on in. Let's hop on in. Hallelujah. All right. This morning, um, hallelujah. This morning, we are going to... Uh, we're going to start in Ezekiel this morning. Our word today is marked. M-A-R-K-E-D. Marked with an exclamation point. Come on. Let's jump into our word this morning, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I love the Lord. He's good to us. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody said, they hope I do my research on my ancestors one day. I'm going to tell you what I did my research on. I was blind, but now I see. I was lame, but now I walk. Come on. So I, they did that. My ancestors, they couldn't raise me from the dead. They couldn't raise me from dead situations. My ancestors couldn't pay no bills. Come on. Come on. The ancestors didn't deliver me. They didn't touch my body when I was paralyzed. Come on. They didn't stabilize my mind when it was going from the left to the right. God, I bless your name. Come on. So I'm just putting my faith in what I know works. I don't, that ain't, that didn't, I'm just saying what I'm saying. Let's don't get it twisted. Let's don't get it confused. It's a blessing uh, for those. Jesus definitely did. Yes, he did. Uh, it's a blessing for those that have come before us. But at the very end of the day, um, I thank God for uh, the blood that was shed. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 9 this morning. All right. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 9. Uh, this morning. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh holy God. Thank you, Lord. God is so faithful. Ezekiel 9. All right. Let's hop on in the word. God, we bless your name. Our word today is marked. So right now, you know, it's a lot of conversation going on talking about the mark of the beast and the mark, the mark, the mark of the beast and all of these things and all these things going on. And yes, we do need to be talking about those things. But baby, I've got to tell you today about the mark of God. Hey, see, we always get, we can't give too much credit to the devil. We can't know more about the devil. I know some people that 
uh, are believers, and they know more about the devils. They know every demon's name. Come on, they know every. They know all of these things. But listen, there is a there. There's a greater mark. Is what I want us to understand. Okay, let's jump into our word today. I'm reading out of the NLT translation. Lord, we ask that you have your way in this place. I want you to put your hand on your chest. That's what we do at Makeover Transformation Church and say, have your way in this place. Because if he has his way in your neighbor, if he has his way in me, but he don't have his way in you, that's good. But we want him to have his way in our own life. So have your way in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so amazing, y'all. All right, let's hop on in. Hey. Thank you, Lord. All right. Ezekiel 9, and we're going to start at verse 1. All right. Ezekiel 9 and verse 1. Then the Lord thundered, bring on the men appointed to punish the city. The Lord said this. You know, we, we talked about for a few moments yesterday how the Bible says that the people knew his deeds, but Moses knew his ways. And a lot of people, you know, will get really frustrated about the things that are going on. And why do babies, uh, why do babies have sickness? And why do babies pass away? And why does this happen? And why does that happen? And why does this happen? And why does that happen? But listen, and, and a lot of time we only know the blessings of God. We only know that God's going to bless you. Turn around, slap your neighbor. God's going to bless you. You know, if you turn around three times in a circle, no, that's a whole lot of hocus pocus. Okay, that's a whole lot of hocus pocus. If you inbox me, I can answer that right this morning. I got to stay on subject. Ezekiel 9 and 1 says, And then the Lord thundered, bring on the men appointed to punish the city. Tell them to bring their weapons with them. This is the word of God. Six men soon appeared from the upper gates that face north, each carrying a deadly weapon in his hand. With them a man with them was a man dressed in linen who carried a writer's case at his side. They all went into the temple courtyard and stood beside the bronze altar. Then the glory of God, the glory of God of Israel rose up between the cherubims where it had rested and moved to the entrance of the temple. And the Lord called to the man dressed in linen who was carrying the writer's case. He said to him, walk through the streets of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads, God, I bless your name, of all who weep and sigh because of the detestable sin committed in their cities. This was the command of the Lord. He said, put a mark on the forehead of those who, who are mad about what I'm mad about. Put a mark on the forehead of those who weep about what I weep about. Put a mark on the forehead of those who stand for what I stand for. Put a mark on the forehead of those who stand against what I stand against. God, I bless your name. Come on. We're talking about the mark of God today. I know we know about the mark of the beast, but did you know that you were marked? Mm, God, I bless your name. Mark those who stand against sin. Mark those whose heart breaks against sin. God, I bless your name. Then I heard the Lord say to the other men, follow him through the city and kill everyone. This is the Lord speaking. See, we, we got we to gotta remember that the highest authority already belongs to God. It's not given back to God. It was already his. God, I bless your name. Then I heard the Lord say to the other men, follow him through the city and kill everyone whose forehead is not marked. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love God. He's good to us. Show no mercy, have no pity. This is the word. Kill them all, old and young girls and women and little children, but do not touch anyone with the mark. My God, began right here, God, I bless your name, at the temple. 
it starts at the church. Hey, so they begin killing the 70 leaders. Jesus. We're talking about being marked on today. Defile the temple, the Lord commanded. Fill its courtyards with corpses. Go. So they went and began killing throughout the city. While they were out killing, I was all alone. I fell down. I fell face down on the ground and cried out, O sovereign Lord, will your fury against Jerusalem wipe out everyone left in Israel? Then he said to me, the sins of the people of Israel and Judah are very, very great. The entire city, the entire land is full of murder. The city is filled with injustice. God, I bless your name. They are saying the Lord doesn't see it. The Lord has abandoned the land. So I will not spare them or have any pity on them. I will fully repay them for all they have done. Then the man in the linen, in the linen clothing who was carrying the writer's case reported back and said, I have done as you have commanded. We are in Ezekiel, we read 9, 1 through 11. Ooh, the Lord said, put my mark, put my seal, cover them, my God, Cover them in the blood. God, I bless your name. Those that are mad about what I'm mad about. Not those that, and he did, it, he said, and start at the church. Start in the temple. God, I bless your name. Because we got too much going on. He didn't say those that just go to church because it's not enough to go to church. We have people that go to church but are not mad about sin because we're still indulging in it. This is something that um, I was speaking to uh, somebody the other day and this was the understanding that I got from the conversation. God, I bless your name. Um, this is a, this is no Ezekiel uh, chapter nine, verse one through 11, Ezekiel chapter nine, verse one through 11. Um, she was saying, you know, she's like, you just move whenever God tell you to move. That's just, you know, amazing. And all those things. Um, and, do I do it afraid? Yes, I do it afraid. I do. That doesn't mean that I don't have natural emotions, but the word of God is the highest authority in my life, okay? Um, and so you have to cast down every high imagination, all right? Uh, and so it's so, and so as she was saying that, she was saying, you know, the Lord uses me, you know, the Lord uses me. And the Lord said, yes, she is, she is anointed, but not submitted. She is anointed and not submitted. And so this morning, as I was getting ready, the Lord reminded me of that word. She's anointed but not submitted, but so many are. So many are operating on the gifts because the word of God says gifts and callings are without repentance. She is anointed but not submitted, and it's dangerous because the Bible says many will come to me on the day of judgment. They'll say, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. Come on. He said, and I will say to them, turn away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. My God, you never fellowship. You didn't obey me. My works were done through you. My works were done through you because he said, no good thing will I withhold from those that diligently seek me and those that walk upright. And so there just might be some people that need a touch from God and, and he's a put healing in your hands. So he will allow you to lay hands on the sick. He will allow you to cast out devils and then go right back out there and lay with devils. Because he's still going to use you. Think about Jonah. Jonah didn't want to be used by God. He did not want to be used by God. He went the opposite way. God, I bless your name. And that, is, and that is the way for so many. So much stuff is going crazy in your life because you're going the opposite way. It's dangerous to be used by God, to be anointed, but not submitted. Mm. Help us, Holy Ghost. Ask Saul. He was anointed by God. But he was not submitted. And the Bible says the Lord. See, we only think God sends blessings. It's not true. The Bible says the Lord sent an evil spirit upon Saul. The Lord did it. Because he was anointed for the assignment, but he was not submitted. He was not willing to wait on God. Let me encourage you this morning. It is uncomfortable to obey God. 
That's what I mean by not being submitted. You're not willing to be uncomfortable. Now, the one thing that the woman of God did say that blessed me so good, she said, people asked you what you're doing, what you're about to do, what you're doing next year, what's your plans for next year, what you're about to do, what you... She said, when you truly are living the life of faith, you don't know what you're about to do. Okay, I was like, you know, that's true. I heard somebody tell me one time, girl, that is... I was doing a girl's hair, and she's like, girl, that is crazy. She's like, your life... She said, girl, I'm just sitting back watching like, this is crazy. What's about to happen next? I said, honey, and I'm on the other side of you like, yes, girl, this is crazy. I don't know what's about to happen next because I don't know. My life is <clears throat> not my own. When you have truly submitted your life, it's uncomfortable. What you? It, it might look wishy-washy to other people. Come on. It's not going to be, you know, you don't know which way. Girl, didn't you sign up for school? Why are you dropping out of school? Because the Lord told me to. And see, the carnal mind does not understand spiritual things. So you're trying to explain to them, God, I bless your name. Come on, that's good. The, you're trying to explain to them, God, I bless your name, uh, about the, the things that they will never comprehend. It's like talking to somebody in English who only speaks French. They don't understand what you're saying. You're wasting your breath. The Bible says, do not throw your pearls to swine. Girl, don't even worry about it. It don't even, at the end of the day, it don't even matter. You have people that'll be so engulfed in your life and don't forget about their whole, their own whole life, because we all gotta stand for ourselves. Okay, we have people that are come, they come on the live in person, so on and so forth. Oh, women can't preach. Women are supposed to be silent in church. All these things, and they have not consulted God. They're just reading, and that's good. I want you to read the word. I want you to read the word, but you have to ask the Holy Spirit to interpret and help you understand. You cannot take one scripture and think that's the whole Bible. You have to understand the context. What is God saying? What is he doing? What example is he showing? What was going on at that time period? Okay, because the Bible says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh, my sons and my daughters shall prophesy. My sons and my daughters, daughters are women, they're girls, they're ladies, they're females. How can they prophesy if they're quiet? To prophesy is only to speak the heart of God, to say what they're hearing from heaven. And that is what we're doing right here. All right. So we have to understand, um, we have to understand that everybody has their own assignment, but it is dangerous to be used by God, but not submitted in your own personal life to always have a word for somebody else because the same holy ghost okay that talks to me about you oh he talks to me about me i'm trying to tell you i don't know nobody i don't know nobody else's testimony you can't always i don't always have a word for you and not one for me the same holy spirit the same god come on help us help us to understand what the lord is doing hmm Hallelujah. All right. Now, listen, God is not mocked. That's so true. God is not mocked. And, and he and what he said, he shall do. And so we have to understand that God is watching over us. And the word declares that you're marked. When you stand for what God stands for, it's not going to be comfortable. You are going to go with, you're going to have persecution and you didn't do anything. Um, someone asked me to pray for their nephew the other day. They said their nephew was in jail and he didn't do anything. It wasn't, Joseph was put into prison and he didn't do anything. See, as long as I can find it in this word, even if it's happening to my life and I'm going through a situation, as long as I can find it in this word, my God, by either by either example or, or a command, or um, as long as I can find it in this word, it gives me comfort because I know I'm not the only one. You will be hated. This is Bible for my name's sake. I was reading in... Hosea, I want to say yesterday, and he was talking about how the prophets uh, are even mocked in the house of God. In the house of God, listen, I catch, I'm catching so much shade right now about telling people that you don't have to be afraid in the house of God. Now, I'm not talking, wear your mask everywhere else, but it's disrespectful in the house of God, whom he is our great protector. But at the very end of the day, wherever your faith is, do what you're going to do. But don't, don't worry me out because of mine. Come on. 
Listen, God is able. The word of God says he's close to the brokenhearted. It's okay. Ah, I got you. Stay up. Don't leave the broadcast, woman of God, because I'm going to bless you with, with these next. I got one more scripture, then we're going to get to the one that's going to bless you real, real good. All right, let's go to Exodus 12. We're talking, God, I bless your name, about being marked this morning. Talking about being marked. Let's go to Exodus um, chapter 12. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Exodus chapter 12, and we're going to start at verse 11. Listen, um, marked are those who follow the instruction of the Lord. Marked. We're talking about being marked by God. We know about everything else. We're talking about being marked by God. Verse 11, Exodus 12 and verse 11. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be carefully, mean be fully dressed. Wear your sandals and carry your walking stick in your hand. This is the thing about God, okay? You have to understand that God, your obedience is your protection. Because some people will say, oh, the Bible's double-minded. No, it's just that God speaks differently in different areas for different situations and different seasons. Because right here he said, wear your sandals. But he told Moses, take off your sandals for you're standing on holy ground. That, so what does that mean? That means that in different seasons, God will call you to do different things. There was a season where the Lord told me, no hair, no fake hair, no makeup. Then there was a season the Lord said, you can go back to it. Is that Bible? Well, we can even think about um, Peter when he was on the roof and he fell into a trance and he was raised not eating meat. He was raised knowing that meat was unclean. And the Lord told him, no, go eat, kill and eat. He had to tell him three times. I know it's real. I know it's real because when the Lord told me that I was able, I could go back to wearing hair and makeup after I was walked through a whole season of deliverance. Six months, cold turkey, no hair, no makeup, because he wanted to make sure that I, that vanity was not a part of my life. Baby, I preached this gospel with a wig on, without a wig on, with makeup, without makeup, come on. But there was a season where I would only go for it if I was fully dolled up. Now you see me more than you see God. Yee. Help us, Holy Ghost, come on. And so he told him, go eat. And when the Lord told me I was able to go back to wearing makeup for, uh, you know, modestly still, still modestly. Um, but I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I was like, oh. And then when I ran across that scripture, when I tell y'all, ooh, that was, I, the Lord said, when he told, when he told Peter three times, I said, I see why. Because once you, when you have a heart to obey God. When you have a heart to obey God, my God, yes, God definitely took the time to tell me about makeup because I was a slave to vanity. I was a slave. To, I didn't feel pretty without it. That was the reason. Good morning, Amanda. Because, listen, everything that God made was beautiful, but I didn't feel beautiful without it. So he had to help me understand uh, that you're beautiful without all of that. And if you only feel beautiful with extra things now, it, you're falling into vanity and idolatry. Song of Solomon 4 and 6 says, you are altogether lovely, my darling. There is no flaw in you, okay? So let's, let's uh, be mindful. I love God. He is so good, y'all. Now, when Moses, um, give me a second, give me a second here. All right. Um, when the Lord begins to deal with you, your obedience is your protection. What he tells you to do now, you do that. What he tells you to do now, you do that. What he tells you to do now, you do that. It's just like uh, your, it's just like our children. Um, with our children, we tell them what we need them to do right now. Well, you didn't say that last time. Last time you said I could have dessert before dinner. But it's, it's, it's contingent upon the circumstances and the things that are going on. Okay, listen, let's go back to our, let's get back in the word. Exodus 12 and 11 says, these are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son 
and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt, I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord, but the blood. We talked about the blood. God, I bless your name. But the blood on your door post will serve as a sign marking the house where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over. God, I bless your name. Come on. When I see the blood, God, I bless your name, I will pass over. Good morning, Nakia. When I see the blood, I will pass over. We're talking about being marked by God this morning. God, I bless your name. Come on. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. I'm just going to. Oh, my God. I love the Lord. He's good to us. See, in Psalms 91, he said, a thousand shall fall at your left and 10,000 at your right, but no harm shall come near your tent. My God. Come on. Listen. Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. I love God. Listen. Um, someone said, my family is broken. I feel like a failure. I was replaced. Listen, no, the Lord was with you. Some things the Lord preserves us from through heartbreak. I heard, uh, I believe her name is Real Talk Kim. She said, the Lord will break your heart to save your soul. I'm the proof. Oh God, I'm the proof. I am the proof. God, I bless your name. Come on. Listen, let's go to Genesis. This is for the woman of God who hopped on her a little earlier. She said she was going through something and it was her fault. I understand what you're saying. Let's go to Genesis 4 this morning. Genesis 4. Hallelujah. I love God, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Genesis 4 and verse 13. So after Cain had killed his brother, this was the conversation that he had with the Lord. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground and from your face. I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer, my God, on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. And then the Lord said to him, not so. If anyone kills Cain, Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold, and the Lord put a mark mm, 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 on Cain. God, I bless your name. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who found him should attack him. Listen, and Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod. Mm, my God. Help us, Holy Ghost. Even after Cain killed his brother, he went to God and he said, listen, this, I know I got myself in this situation. I know I got myself in this situation and the thing that I've done, I should receive this punishment. God, I bless your name. But what was so beautiful was the Lord still marked him. He still went away. He still went out, but he went as a wanderer. And that's a whole nother message that we'll talk about one day. Uh, but the Lord marked him that nobody should, if they, if they put they, I know you was wrong, but if they put their hands on me, you're marked by God and I'm going to deal with them. God, I bless your name. Oh, to be marked by God. That's beautiful. Yeah, you was guilty, but you still marked. That's what I want to encourage somebody to know today. You, you was guilty, but you are still marked by God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to John 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to John 6 this morning. Lord, we bless your name. You're good to us. John 6, and we're going to start at verse 37. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are marked. I love God. He's good to us. However, we're in John 6 and 37. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God, who sent me not to do my own will. And this is the will of God that I should not lose even one of those 
that he has given me. Listen, that doesn't bless me so good. I don't even know. Woo, glory to God. Come on. Listen, and it is the will of God that I should not lose even one who was given to me. You, you remember yesterday, if you tuned in, yesterday we talked about how this race was not given to the swift. Neither to the strong, but only those that endure till the end. Blessings to you who came in and said you're here for the first time. We're glad to have you. Welcome to the Makeover Ministry. I'm Apostle Julia. Listen, it's a blessing to be given the race. He said, I'm not going to lose even one that the Father has given to me. Listen, what can separate me from the love of God? Not angels, not demons, not life nor death. God, I bless your name. Come on in the womb, people of God. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up on the last day. God, I bless your name. For it is my father's will that all who see his son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up in the last day. That is such a beautiful blessing to be marked by God. Mm. God, we bless your name. I love it. To be marked by God, to be covered, to be protected. God, I bless your name. You aren't doing this thing by yourself. That's what I just want to encourage somebody to know today. You're not in it by yourself. For he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. And he is not a man that he shall lie. And many people have a hard time believing God because we have daddy issues. But then we have many people that believe God real good because they had a good daddy. But either way, our Heavenly Father watches over us. And even in those hard moments and uncomfortable moments, this is not the time to get depressed. You're being pressed. This is the time where you, you said you feel lost. Well, God knows exactly where you are. You are right in the palm of his hand. His eye is on the sparrow. So I know that he is watching over you. Be not dismayed and be not discouraged for God is not mocked. Exactly what he said he's going to do. But the Bible says after you have suffered. This is a false uh, law that we have made in our hearts. We believe that life is without suffering. It's not. I don't know where we learned that from. We believe that life is without pain. We believe that everything is supposed to be sunshine and rainbows. It's not true. Life is going to hurt sometimes. You are going to cry sometimes. Come on. You're going to throw a temper tantrum sometime. My God. But if God be for you. You, if God be for you, he's greater than the world against you. We have to learn how to go through pain. We, we, life is not, life is not um, possible without pain. We cannot extract pain out of the life si uh, system. No, it's a part of it. Things are going to make you cry. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be talked about, mistreated. This is why in order to really raise productive children, you cannot raise them in a way where you're, you're trying to shelter them from all the bad things, shelter them from all the things, shelter them, shelter them. No, you have to let them be exposed to that and talk them through that thing. Help them to understand. If the first time they hear a cuss word and the first time somebody tell them about sex, no, they should hear about sex in your house. And you teach them right from wrong. You teach them, God, I bless your name, that a girl is not supposed to be with a girl. And a boy is not supposed to be with a boy. The first time they hear that should not be in the streets. No, because now what that looks like is mama left out something. And daddy left out something. No, I didn't leave out anything. Come on. We have to have these whole conversations with our children. We have to 
understand what it is that God is saying, what he's doing, and how he has called us to be an example and train up our children in the way that they shall go. We have to have the conversation that you should not be having sex and you're not married. Sex is for marriage. I know the world tells you get you a sad chick and, and, and test it out and test drive the car and all these things. I get it. I hear you. All of that. I got it. I hear you. But we have to teach our children. You have to have you have to let them understand. Exactly. If we don't do it, the system will. So true. So true. You have to lay this thing all the way out and show them good and evil because it's the world we live in. You can't let the first time they hear about drugs come up whenever they're out in the streets. No, because it's like mama left something. Out. This is the taboo thing. Nothing is taboo. We got to talk about sex, drugs, all that stuff. And we have to talk about how that's the world's way and this is God's way. Gossiping, lying, cheating, stealing. We got to talk, drinking, smoking. We got to talk about this is the world's way and this is God's way. There's a way that seemeth right. There is that broad road. Eee. My God, you're being pressed out, woman of God. It's not comfortable. I didn't like my season of pressing and every new level comes a new season of pressing. And humiliation is a part of it. It was humiliating for Jesus to be on the cross. And the word of God says, must Jesus bear the cross alone and the rest of the world go free? No, we're going to experience everything that he experienced. You're going to experience rejection. The prophet is without honor in his own hometown. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna experience disrespect from your family. Jesus was teaching in the temple and his mother and his brother showed up. His mother and his brother showed up. And they said, can you tell Jesus to come out? Now, you know good and well I'm preaching. Why would you call me out? You come in. He said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Only those that do the will of God. The thing that I love about God is there's nothing wasted in your testimony. Not one bit. Not one bit. He uses all of them. I was gay for 11 years, but the woman that I married, she was gay for, I want to say, it may be closer to 25 years. And the Lord delivered us both. We both have husbands and I moved on on with our life and God is faithful. It just, it's a part of the testimony. It's, it, you can't change what you did yesterday. But I'm asking you to gird up your loins and put your hand back in God's hand because the thing about it is this. This is the thing that's so crazy. Uh, we can really become, uh, depression is a, is a form of idolatry. Because now you're worrying about, I, 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 I'm so dumb. I did this. I messed up. I can't do it. I can't get it right. I'm so silly. I'm so stupid. I don't know. I don't like this. I don't feel this. This don't feel good. I, 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 I. Now you've made it about you. You've taken your eyes off God. He said, if you keep your mind, stay fixed. Focus and fashion on me. I will keep you in perfect peace. Some people, we have made our pain our, our God. We worship it. We cater to it. Girl, I would go, but you know my depression. I would go, but you know my anxiety. We put claims on it. Help us, Holy Ghost. Listen, uh, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above more than we can think, ask, or imagine. And we lose the love of God in your son's life. May the love of God chase him down. Yee, my God. May the love of God chase him down because the love of God chased me down. Oh, my God. It is the love of God that draws us to repentance. Thank you, God. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for your word on today, oh great God. Thank you for speaking today, God. Thank you for reminding us that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above more than we can thank, ask, or imagine.
Lord, we ask that you touch the woman of God whose heart is broken this morning, God. May she know you through this situation as heart fixer, mind regulator, comforter, keeper, sustainer. May she not be bitter behind this situation, God, but may she come out with a testimony all for the glory of God, for your word declares in Romans 8 and 28 that all things work. It doesn't feel good, but it's working together for the good of those that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. It's going to work together for your good woman of God. It's going to be okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to process your emotions. But at the end of all of that, you got to get up and say, God, I trust you. Lord, I bless you. The word of God says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. When David said that, that did not mean he didn't have tears in his eyes sometime when he was praising God. But I'm still going to bless you because when I begin to take my eyes off of God, I begin to worship myself. I begin to worship the pain. I begin to work, worship the circumstances. But God, I say I trust you. It is in you that I live and that I move and that I have my being. Lord, we thank you. Even though we go through things and we are being slaughtered like sheep daily, overwhelming victory is ours. May we not give up in the middle. Give us strength to endure the race that you have given us. May we count it an honor and a privilege to suffer for your name's sake. Let that mind be in us that is in Christ Jesus. Because his mind was different in order to go through. He didn't even have a home to go to at the end of the night. And even when we don't believe, the father in Mark 9, when Jesus asked him, do you believe I can heal you? He said, I believe. But help my unbelief. It's okay to be honest with God. I believe, but help my unbelief, God. What does that look like? God, I know that you're God. I, I believe in you, but I don't know if I believe you can pull me through this because the pain is so great. The humiliation is so great. Hey, the bills are so high, God. Children are acting so crazy. My husband is doing so much. My health, the report is bad, I believe, but help. My unbelief. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I believe, but help my unbelief. Sometimes that's the best thing you can say. Hallelujah. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hmm. We all have areas of unbelief. And they may not be um, long. You may not carry it for a long time, but we all have areas. When Right before Peter stepped out that boat, there was a moment because your natural, your, your natural mind and the spirit of God are going to get into an entanglement for a quarter, but it just depends which one's coming out. Which one? Which one? Are you going to let fear win? My God, wait, wait a minute. Which one? Which, which way am I going? Ooh, which one am I going to come on? Which, which one is coming? Is the spirit of God going to win or is fear going to win? Is my flesh going to win? We all have areas, I believe, right before he stepped out of the boat. I just, I know it because 
trying to tell you I live this thing. Come on. Right before I know who, my God, I believe. Oh, God, but help. Hey, God, I bless your name. My unbelief was I put one foot in front of the other. Thank you, Lord. God is faithful, y'all. I want to give you the opportunity to sow into this message on today because I know it has been a blessing to you. My cash app is dollar sign makeover, M-A-K-E-O-V-A, ministry, dollar sign makeover, M-A-K-E-O-V-A, makeover, ministry. I want to give you an opportunity to sow into uh, the word on today. God, I bless your name. God is so faithful, y'all. He's a good God. Definitely keep praying for me as I'm praying for you. As we are, uh, I'm in the process of transitioning and moving from Clarksville, Indiana to uh, Savannah, Georgia. So that's why you see the backgrounds keep changing up because we're actually right now we're on a family vacation and we're you're traveling some. But um, God is good. He is good. He is amazing. Hallelujah. I want to also give you the opportunity to partner with the ministry. If you have decided I'm going to make makeover ministry a part of my morning, my morning regimen, a part of my morning seek of the Lord. God, I bless your name. Um, I, I want to encourage you to partner, partner with the ministry. Um, we're here Monday through Friday. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to encourage you to partner with the ministry. Um, listen. Ooh, we get we getting it done. <laughs> um, ooh. Hey Amen. Listen, leaving empty-handed is the best thing you can do sometimes. I promise you. I promise you. What tell me your name? Tell me your name. Um I believe you got Angelica. I believe that's your name on here. But when I tell you, you're going to look back at this moment. I've been there. I have been there. You're going to look back at this moment and be like, man, I hated going through that, but it built something in me. I'm praying for you, Angelica. It's going to be all right. I promise you. I promise you. If I be a woman of God, I'm telling you, it's going to be all right. I didn't say you wasn't going to cry. I didn't say it was not going to hurt. I'm telling you. Keep your seek. Keep seeking God. Keep pressing in. God, I hurt, but I'm going to keep seeking you. Come on. Keep seeking the Lord. It is going to be okay. You are, you're on my prayer list, woman of God. It's going to be all right. Been there. I've done that, but I know him as a heart fixer. I'm trying to tell you, I know him as a mind regulator. I know him as the restoring God. I was homeless for three years, houseless for three years, and the Lord has restored Lost my car, lost my salon, lost my job, lost my mind, lost my kids. <laughs> and I got it all back. Come on. Not by power, not by might, but only by the Spirit of God. And there are some things you cannot learn about God on a sunshiny day. You got to go through the rain to know that he is an umbrella. You got to go through the rain to know that he'll be your galoshes. You got to go through the rain to know that he will be your raincoat. I'm the proof, and you will be the proof, too. You're going through the fire right now, but you ain't by yourself. God, I bless your name. Mm. Put your hand back to the plow. Continue to seek God. Keep seeking the face of God. It's your seek that keeps you. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. But also it says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Let me help you how to, how to sanitize your heart from the pain. Don't focus so much on the pain. Turn on your praise and worship music. Begin to worship. You have to teach your thoughts to obey Christ. Your thoughts want to worship the pain. Your thoughts want to think about how hard it was, how much has gone wrong, how they didn't do right, how this could have went. No, because now your eyes are looking too low. He said, look up unto the hills. Come with, come at your help. Your help comes from the Lord. I'm trying to tell you my testimony. I have been one that suffered with depression. 
looking back, I had to go through all that so I could sit right here with y'all. So that I could be the life coach that I am today, that I could be the preacher that I am today, the pastor that I am today, the mother that I am today, the apostle that I am today. I had to go through all of that. I've been divorced four times. I mean, divorced three times. I'm on my fourth marriage. The other three wasn't right. Come on. Been through anxiety, panic attacks, all of those things. But I'm trying to tell you that through it all, God is still God. He is still able. You're going to have a testimony after this. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity to partner with the ministry. If you would like to partner with the ministry. And maybe you have your own home church, so you, this is not the ministry you want to tithe into. Maybe you have your own, so you have your you have your place where you bring your 10%. But I want to give you an opportunity to partner with the ministry uh, with a seat of $4 a day. That's $20 a week. I know this is blessing you because it blesses me every day. So I know that it is blessing you. All right. The Bible says freely give as you freely receive. And this ain't free. Okay, it cost me something. I got to get up out the bed with my husband. I got to get in the face of God. Um, the ministry is called Makeover Ministry. I have to seek the Lord. My sacrifices, I, I keep because, but I will do it even, even if you don't sow. But I want to give you an opportunity to pair because when you put seed in good ground, you bring forth a harvest. You bring forth a harvest. Hallelujah. My God. All of the hardship that we go through is only for the making of our testimony. Okay. It's only for the making of our testimony. Hallelujah. If you say, hey, I want to come and I want to be an official part, uh, my cash app is dollar sign makeover ministry. Makeover ministry is not about the money, baby. I've been doing this. Listen, you can go back on my YouTube channel. I've been doing this for a long time. I don't even know how to do nothing else but share the gospel because I shared a whole lot of foolishness, okay? Um, but if you want to, to say, I want to be I want to be a part, I want to be in the fold, feel free to inbox me after the broadcast. You also can email me at aj at makeovertc.org, makeover, aj at makeovertc.org, yes. Um I also do life coaching, so if you want to do one-on-one, -on -one, because you're, sometimes we can get so godly that we forget faith without works is dead. So you have to also have, um, okay, uh, you have to also have a practical part. And so life coaching uh, is where I come in and do help you with the practical part. God, I bless your name. Ooh, the sun is coming up, y'all. Hallelujah. So we are going to go in peace today. We're going to go have us a good day on purpose. Remembering that if God be for us, he's greater than the world against us. All right. Now, we'll see you all back here um, Monday morning at 7 a.m. Yesterday, y'all. Why y'all didn't tell me? Yesterday, I said I will see y'all back on Monday. I did not even remember that yesterday was Thursday. <laughs> Just like I said, I've been, we've been traveling all week. We've been on vacation all week me and my family so i also want to give a special shout out to them i uh, i'm grateful i love my family my children my sister my husband um give a special shout out to my mama and those that support me my spiritual mother and my spiritual father okay it takes a village when you see me sit here i know you see me sitting here and i'm one person baby it, i'm not sitting here by myself it takes a village because after pouring out so much, somebody got to pour back into me. Somebody got to come alongside. I catch a lot of slack. So you may say, I can't, uh, you might say, I can't so financially. Definitely cover me in prayer and ask God to, when I'm someone that I want uh, to financially sow into, but I just financially do not have it, I know it's one thing to not, to not uh, want to give it and you have it. But it's another thing. To want to give and you don't have it. That's when I say God bless them because everybody ain't broke. Everybody ain't going through financial hardship. Okay. 
All right. All right, people of God, I love you all. Be encouraged. Have a great weekend on purpose. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. It's called Makeover Ministry, M-A-K-E-O-V-A. -E also, if you have not picked up my book from Amazon, it will bless you. It's called Doll's 90 Day Devotional. Um, I know that it will be a blessing to you. The Holy Spirit woke me up consecutively for 90 days, and it has been a blessing to so many. Thank you for everyone that is sold into the ministry, for all the blessings on TikTok. May the Lord give it back to you. Press down shaking together and running over my men given to your bosom have a good day on purpose people of god be encouraged if god be for you he's greater than the world against you blessings and peace